300 billion dollars or, or, or 50% of Russia's, the Central Bank of Russia's reserve position. In this interview, Jim Rickards discusses the U.S. government's plan to seize $300 billion of Russian-owned U.S. Treasury securities held mostly in Europe to fund Ukraine's reconstruction. Rickards argues that this move would essentially default on U.S. Treasury securities and could lead to a loss of confidence in the U.S. dollar as a global reserve currency. He highlights the potential repercussions, such as other countries divesting from U.S. dollars and points to the rise of the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, countries as a counterbalance to the U.S.-led financial system. Rickards suggests that the BRICS are working on establishing their own currency, potentially backed by gold, to challenge the dominance of the U.S. dollar. He criticizes the U.S. government's reliance on sanctions, warning that it could drive countries away from the dollar and weaken its status as a reserve currency. Overall, Rickards suggests that the U.S. government's actions could have significant geopolitical and economic consequences, ultimately benefiting Russia and the BRICS nations. Anyway, we have this $300 billion silly in U.S. Treasury securities, mostly in Europe. The amount in the United States is about $30 billion. But most of us in Europe it's in. It's in Deutsche Bank and Barclays and HSBC, Unicredit, UBS, and a few other banks. Now what the United States wants to do, and we're actually passing legislation to authorize this, probably already authorized, but just to make it clear, is to seize the assets. And we've already frozen them. We've frozen them. Meaning where she can't sell them, can't collect the interest, can't transfer them, but they still belong to Russia. That's what freezing is. Now, what the government wants to do is seize them, confiscate them, basically take them from Russia, steal them in effect, and then use that money to rebuild Ukraine. Now, there are a number of problems with that. Number one, you're not going to be able to rebuild Ukraine because Russia will take over the whole country at the rate they're going, so there'll be nothing. Russia might want to rebuild it. The Ukrainians might. But the West is not going to rebuild Ukraine because the West is not going to be involved. That's how badly they're losing. But that aside, when you do that, that's a default on U.S. Treasury securities. I don't care what you call it. You can dress it up in legal language. I'm a lawyer, so I actually understand all this. But the rest of the world is going to look at that. And Saudi Arabia, Taiwan, China, South Korea, and other countries that have hundreds of billions or in some cases, upwards of close to a trillion dollars, in the case of China, have U.S. Treasury securities thing of saying, hey, you just sold $300 billion, or 50% of Russia's, the central bank of Russia's reserve position. These aren't, this isn't like oligarchy, oligarchy money, or, you know, something else we might be able to rationalize it. What if they don't like what we do? What if they don't like one of our policies? So all these countries is going to be highly motivated to get out of us dollars. You can't do it all at once. This will take time. And this, then I said, this is all connected. This then ties into the rise of the BRICS currency. The BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. They've been around. They've been meeting since 2006 that their last meeting in August, they added five new members. So they added five new members. So now sort of the BRICS 10. But the members they added include Saudi Arabia and Iran. So now, if you look inside the BRICS, you've got Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Russia. I believe UAE was also added United Arab Emirates and Abu Dhabi in particular. So now, you don't need OPEC anymore. You have OPEC inside the BRICS. In fact, Russia has never been a member of OPEC. But now you have Iran, Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Russia all inside the BRICS. So they have as much power, probably more than the OPEC. And they're working on a new currency. And it's all designed to create, basically recreate the Bretton Woods institutions. We talked about that. But they have the new development bank in Shanghai which is a clone of the World Bank. 
they have the conditional asset reserve as basically a clone of the IMF swing lender for countries that are experiencing capital outflows. And they have a lot of other institutions as well. But now they're going to have their own currency. They're working on their own payments channels. So when I've told people, the Treasury and the Fed Pentagon, I've had all those meetings at different times. I said you are. And I said this years ago, said you're overusing sanctions. Sanctions can work against a medium-sized country that doesn't have many alternatives, but against a major power like Russia. They don't work at all. But by overusing them, you're going to drive people countries away from the dollar and undermine the role of the dollar first as a major global payments currency, and then ultimately as a reserve currency. I pretty I always got the meetings, but it pretty much got you know. Left out of the room was one treasury official. David Dollar, interesting last name, but David was in charge of the dollar in terms of treasury liaison with Asia, and he liked one meeting, IS. Aid, pretty much really just said he slammed his hands on the T. This is at the Pentagon, both palms down I am, and said the dollar has been the global reserve currency. It is the global reserve currency today, and it will always be the global reserve currency asset David. I feel like I'm in Whitehall. 1913, listening to John Bogle talking about how sterling is the global reserve currency was, will be, I said that's not true. I said, it could be true if you, if you manage it properly, but you're overusing sanctions. You're going to know how many times you can hit the punching bag for the punching bag, and someone walks out of the room. And that's kind of where we are so, so where we've pretty much lost one Ukraine. We've lost the financial war that goes with it. Russia is doing extremely well. And Russia is a key part of the BRICS. And the BRICS are working together to create this new currency that will be linked to gold won't be strict gold standard. But it will be the value of one BRIC unit. I don't know what they're going to call it. I call it a BRIC for now. But maybe the court, the back quarter. Who knows. But it will be, it's valuable, will be determined, be determined by weight of gold, weight of gold not one dollar equivalent. You can obviously really transitive law, convert that to dollars, but it, they'll let the dollar do the dirty work in the gold market, and they'll just peg to a quantity of gold. You don't even need that much gold to do it. You just say that's what it's worth. We issue it, and we accept it. And so all that's happening around us, the White House is pretty much clueless they don't understand this. You know, like Mike Johnson is the new Speaker of the House, but he seems to be on board this Russia confiscation. I have spoken to some people that are going to try to take him aside and explain what a, what a blunder that would be. But at least so far, they're going ahead. 